how the gaming presentation so is going to be quite simple in, in its context. We've all heard about climate research, and of course, the primary science comes from numerical weather forecasting. And with the advancing science of computation, I think it's really seen so much of uh, computation requirements. Because for a quick review of the background science, we usually have global climate modeling. Am I not audible enough? Okay, great. Oh, you're recording it. I don't know that. I have to start from the first now. So, we used to have what's called, we do still do have global climate modeling. Now, the global climate models are sort of coarse models. What we do is we divide the entire globe, the Earth, into grid boxes of relatively coarse resolution. So it can be about 250 to 500 kilometer. One grid box can be so large. But with the increasing interests, not only in the weather sciences, because we want accurate numerical weather prediction forecasts for the next three or four days. And we also like to know how the climate is going to be changing in the future. And therefore, that has evolved into a special branch of science, which is called as regional climate modeling, which we are actually leading the research in Tropical Marine Science Institute, which is uh, dynamical downscaling, as we call it. You must have heard about the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, who were given the Nobel Prize in 2007. One of their primary interests is climate modeling. And the results of this climate modeling are then used in several impact studies, which means the first step is to identify how the climate behaves for a given region. And we do all those sciences for the Southeast Asian region. And how we do this is we use supercomputing clusters, and that's why I'm here. We, use, uh, we have tested different, different cl clusters, as we call them, supercomputing clusters around the world, in fact, right from UK, USA, until our own uh, clusters in-house, and the one which is the university computing cluster, SVU, here. It entails long years of climate modeling. Therefore, we run a continuous model simulation of a computer-based climate model, and that simulation goes for minimum of 30 years in its length. So a total climate change would then mean that you're looking at 100 years of climate from now. And therefore, you look at present-day climate, and then you simulate 100 years from now, you look at the future climate, and then you look at the change, future minus present, which we attribute as climate change. And that climate change comes from these long years of climate modeling, which is very computationally intensive. In our case, we use the NCAR model, the National Center of Atmospheric Research in the US, who are pioneers in these uh, climate modeling efforts. It's called as the WARF, WRF, with the Weather Research and Forecast Model, which is both a numerical prediction tool if it's run in the weather mode. It is also a climate tool if it's run in the climate mode. The only difference being for the weather mode, you run the model only for a few days or hours in advance, while for climate mode, you run it several years into the future. And as I mentioned, these are continuous simulations, which means it's computationally very, very demanding. And WARF is, uh, is also called as a regional climate model. It, it can be WARF or any other model, but they just don't like friends. They cannot work along with other models in a cluster. They would like to be completely independent because they share so much of read-write operations within a cluster. And if a given a storage volume, I think, they, I think it, what, what this otherwise called is the million I.O. or something as they call it, because I'm not really so technical, because I'm more on the science side, so my jargon may be slightly different. But what I mean is a read-write operation is so many times per minute or per hour and therefore, the requirement in capacity of the networks, the memory, the efficiency of the, the disk, the core, whatever you call it, is really, really very intensive. And therefore, we go to parallel computing because these models can be run in parallel environment because uh, we can never, never get into a serial mode of uh, looking at climate change because that itself will take 100 years to run. So <laughs> unfortunately, we have to live through the day to see what the changes in that. Yeah, so 150 years, so that's what our target is. And the question, the science question is, in what time span can we get it done? So the primary objective here is to look at climate change. We want to look at the present day, 1961 to 2010, the last 50 years, recent past, and then look at the future, about 100 years, so 150 years of climate change. And that has to be done for a high resolution region of Southeast Asia. I'm going to show that in a, in a minute. And I would 
certainly emphasize that running and simultaneous post-processing of large data is really, 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 very intensively required computational ability. We have so much voluminous data coming into the model, which we call as driving data. The model itself keeps on running for a long time, churning out so much of output data. And after that, we post-process that, and then we have the post-process data. So the data is divided into three phases, and then the, the volume of data that's accumulated over time can run into several terabytes, if not to gigabytes. But of course, we know the limitation of what one we can have. We can ask for the moon, but if you don't have it, what we simply do is replenish the data as and when we have. We delete it, and then we have to so sort of replenish that's a red. So we keep on using the same disk space. So we are 24-7 like occupied to do that. We have automated so many things which can be done, which does not need us to sit before the computer. But nevertheless, we need this resource. And therefore, the need of a dedicated computing cluster is necessitated. That's why I said WAF is one model which doesn't like friends, which means we cannot share the cluster or the resource with other models which are running primarily because I think the other models are also equally computationally demanding, and therefore the model, our model at least, crashes. He doesn't really like to run multiple programs within a given environment. And therefore we need high speed performance and large disk space. Once again, the question, how fast or in what time span can I have this 150 years done? It's because we do have lots of government projects, especially because of course climate uh, research is being funded by big agencies, and then the interest is to see for adaptation. Now that's the question. If I'm given 10 years for this to do the work, I'm more than happy to have some little resources I can keep on running. But the objective is if it is adaptation group, which is a planning group, which is asking, I would like to know what I should be doing if there is less rain for the next 20 years. I have to plan the next six months. Can you tell me how? So the time span I have for my experiment or my project is only like six to eight months. The eight months I have to do this and tell the group or the agency that this is what is going to happen, which means it's extremely tight schedule. Now this is how it looks like. We have a big region for 30 kilometers. Obviously Singapore is really, really forgotten in this map because we don't even hardly see Singapore. It's just one small point. If it's extremely difficult to only simulate Singapore within a small computer model, and because the science also requires that you cannot have just one point simulated in the model, so you need to have your neighbors because we know that we are influenced by our neighbors. But now if you see a 30 kilometer, which means we have a big region, which means we have to have the atmospheric processes realistically simulated in the computer model. Therefore, we call it as a mesoscale model. The, the, the length and breadth is about 5,000 to 6,000 kilometers across and breath wide. And here we nest a small region focusing on our region specifically. So this is highest resolution as we call it, 10 kilometers, and which is actually having a buffer layer of 30 kilometers. So the model is computing two domains as we call them. One is a 30 kilometer for such a big region in real dimensions, and then the other one for 10 kilometers. This sort of curiosity, this is how we churn. This is just an idea to say what we get from the model. For example, the model can tell you what the temperature is like. And then it can also tell how the monsoon winds are there. So for example, we can see that uh, this is actually a, uh, a truncated result for clarity. So you can see what's the temperature, what's the sea surface temperature, what's the land temperature. And here we see the monsoon winds. We know this the northeast monsoon is driven by the winds coming from the South China Sea and then they go through Singapore towards uh, the Java Island. And this is very crucial because any storm surges which we have towards Singapore or something is influenced only during the monsoon season, which means any strong winds over this region is likely to impact rise of sea level in the Malaysian Peninsula. So these are some of these, uh, the, the research elements which come out of this model, and it's only for uh, interested people. So in this exercise, we have tested several servers because of the timeline. TMSI, that's where I come from, we have some in-house servers. It's a very small cluster, mini cluster of about only 16 nodes. We have uh, Alatom, who is a general provider, service provider in Singapore. So civil engineering, we have a cluster set up in the civil engineering department, which is again a 16 node cluster. Amazon, we all know Amazon very well. 
they are also service providers. We, we initially tried Amazon Singapore, and that was totally not in our desire with the computation uh, demands we had. So they recommended us to log on to US Northeast, in fact, for the Amazon. And therefore, all those experiments which we tried out was in the Amazon US Northeast, not in Singapore. No, not east, it says. The instances are physically located, I think, in northeast. And there are three categories, like Asia Pacific, northeast, and something else. So I don't know why we had, because we, in fact, that, that was a concern for us because of the data transfer. There's no way I'm going to be transferring like uh, 10 GB itself is going to take 10 days and terabytes out of question. Well, we had that problem with Alatim last time. The Alatim is just in Bedok. But fortunately, they were in Bedok. And when we were really in crunch of time, we took the taxi every alternate days. We went there, gave one disk there. We put all the disk back, and then fortunately there was somebody to help us every alternate days. And then I called him and said, can you put that data? I'm coming and collecting it. So it was literally like a courier postman service. And I think it's too expensive to travel to the US Northeast every alternate days to have this done. Although, although we were said that we could use the DHL service or even the Amazon import export service as they term it, they said that there could be somebody who can physically do the same thing and then send it back to us. But even then, it can be one week to 10 days by the time even we get the data disk, but we have no leisure time. Or we cannot wait until we get one week or 10 days to sit, oh, just drink since to like get the data disk. So it's out of question. But nevertheless, to us, that was more manageable. What was more crucial was the question, and what time can I have my simulations done? Handling the data was secondary to us. We thought, okay, we'll do something else to sort it out. But then I'll tell you what, what happened. You, of course, you can see, see the results of that. And then SVU, that's the latest one we have had from, from the computing center. We have a 16-node cluster with 12 processors each, about 192 processors, all connected by infinity band. And there goes the testing. So the runtime for one calendar year for this resolution turns out to be like what you see in the graph. Our own cluster is not too uh, high-powered, so it's like a standard, a standard Ethernet, 1 GB Ethernet power cluster, simple cluster, so we cannot really expect miracles. And therefore, one calendar year takes about 12 days to run. That's a 10-kilometer domain, 12 days to run one year. But we are looking at 150 years, so you can multiply 150 times 12. That's the time when I will be able to do it. Alatum, yes, it's about 10 days. Civil engineering, four days. And Amazon is no better than our own civil engineering cluster here. So we decided why pay them? Rather we pay and invest it on our own. We, we were surprised, we communicated to Amazon many times, we asked them how is the server built or something, but they did not divulge all, all information. They said, no, we cannot tell you. But then the reason for asking was not we were curious, we wanted to benchmark with something we had better and we wanted to see how we can optimize it. Because people around us, they advise us, Amazon is the best one, it's a poor man's uh, baby, whatever, whatever they said. So you can use it, and no, it wasn't. It was really not. For the benchmarking, without nothing done for 10 days, I think they've already paid $1,000. So it's certainly not a poor man's uh, show or something. It is expensive. And SPU, finally, yes, we've, uh, right now we are quite happy to use that because it takes close to one day in running one calendar year. We can be happy if we have two or three years in one day, but at this point, having compared all the other servers with this, I think we are happy with this kind of a setup right now. That is because what really costs the bottleneck for us? One is the storage mount. Well, I think experts are here so they can really give the details, but I'm not too sure. But of the testings we have done, the way you mount the common storage in a cluster really is causing the bottleneck. As long as you have several nodes connected, I think the read-write operation or the, the travel time or latency, whatever you call it, should be equal from all the nodes, unlike that one head node mounted to one storage and all the sub nodes or compute nodes accessing the head node is not a good idea. If the cluster is configured in such a way that the head node has the storage and the computer nodes do not have direct access to the storage and in fact com com commute, so communicate to the head node, that causes the bottleneck. Problem number two, network cables. We have the ethernet 1 GB, the standard 10 GE, we have the MyDNet or the Infinity Band, the latest uh, innovations of fiber, whatever, whatever it is. So the bottleneck is definitely because of Ethernet. They do not serve our purpose. They can be used more for like experimental basis if you have luxury of time, but certainly in a uh, requiring time-laden re time activities, 
I think MariNet or InfiniBand is good. So let me recall that when I spoke about the civil engineering department, what we have there is the MariNet networked cluster. So that was actually our benchmarking exercise initially when we started this. So wherever, whichever servers we tested, like Amazon, Alatom, we had civil engineering as a benchmark and we could compare and say, wow, it takes only four days or three days for one year, so I'm looking for something better than that, and that is because it was MariNet. Memory, I think 48 GB or something, yes, so that seems not too much of a problem, but still a problem. But I should tell you that virtual and physical cores really did cause problems. Because the Amazon, I believe, is virtual cores, and like, like physical servers, which are here, and we have tested that the virtual cores do not really solve the problems. They are too bad. At least for WAF model, our model, virtual cores are not good. The model can run, for example, for one day or two days, but we, have, we are seriously in doubt whether it can withstand a 30-year simulation because they are just not made for it, I fear. So we really require physical servers, high-speed cables, proper storage mount, and high memory. That's a recap. What we have, the network cables, is like this. So InfiniBand, and that's what the SVU, our, our computer center, has given us of late, so we are extremely happy with that. So that really shows that the performance is large, uh, is, is uh, much, much better when you compare to the standard Ethernet, which are really obsolete now. And this is how the final performance in, in the SVU turns out to be. Now, this is a different benchmarking is because we wanted to see whether increase in number of processors really mean that there is increase in performance, but it turns out it's not the case. Because we tested one node, sorry, one processor, of course. So for a 10-day run, it takes about 760 minutes, more than 10 hours, really. It's linear until you come to about six, uh, uh, sorry, four nodes with 36 processors, and then for 72, it's about 60 and slightly less. But from 72 onwards until 180, that's even if you twice or double the processors, you do not see an increase in performance. So there's kind of a, kind of a bottleneck there or the accurate number of processors the model will really be efficient in. And that has really to be worked out. I think our experts did help with some formula. We have been working on it. But this seems to be still the best of all that we have tried so far. So the results is, so far one calendar year we can do in one day, although we desire two or three years to be done in one year because I know there are several other clusters where high power which can do that, but uh, we are still hopeful to optimize it so that we can slightly make, make our results better. The IB, the infinite band cables, certainly increase performance speed for sure, and more processors necessarily do not increase speed, and therefore the SVU system which we have tested is the best so far. And there I end, and I should really thank Mr. Chi Chiang, uh, Grace Fu, and Junong for here, who have been constant support and help for all our multitude of questions bothering them all the time, even during New Year and Christmas. So thank you so much. So we will continue to work on optimizing. Optimization, probably this seems to be the main problem in really getting things done in a shorter time. So that's, that's what we are working on. Thank you.